in you. Okay. That's, not, that's nice. Zoom says that. Yeah. Gives the option to. Uh, well, okay. Um, can you please uh, say first, uh, present yourself, maybe also a bit uh, present yourself uh, in this very context with, uh, with the <laughs> people you see around yourself, maybe in, from this very perspective? So, uh, are you speaking to now to all of us? Yes. Okay, so since, since I'm late to the meeting, I'll go last. <laughs> Maybe you could you could start, Michael, because you are our dean. <laughs> and because you came late. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll wait because I'm still getting a little settled. I really thought this was not going to happen today. Mm. I'm going to be drinking my coffee as we go, if that's okay. Yeah. Mm. Uh, okay. uh, I would be interested in, in knowing first uh, from you, Camilla, how did you choose uh, to, to associate the three of us? <laughs> ah. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, Jean-Marie. <laughs> uh, so, uh, since I already uh, drank my coffee, coffee uh, I can I can start. And uh, yeah, and it's already afternoon here. Uh, well, I uh, yeah, for some reasons I uh, did associate uh, you in pairs rather than in this trio. Uh, in fact. Uh, but then, uh, really, like uh, Jean-Marie and uh, and Michael, um, Michael and Dan, uh, to some extent Dan and Jean-Marie, uh, and then I thought, uh, since I know Dan the, the best of, of you, I thought I will ask uh, Dan, and if this makes uh, any sense, and he didn't uh, re reject my. Uh, <laughs> association <laughs> uh, and so uh, I thought okay uh, let's uh, let's try I mean I know uh, I I've read some uh, things from you I uh, from you all I I listened to if not read then I no I've read all of you here so uh, where if I were to look for some well I don't know. Uh, so it's uh, a bit like uh, uh, three uh, you here. It's a bit then um, a bit coincidence, but not that much. I am sure that there are uh, um, many similarities. And uh, besides, you, Michael, also responded uh, to me in one of the first emails that you feel close uh, uh, in spirit, as you said. Uh, I guess. Uh, mm -hmm. to both this gentleman. <laughs> uh, so this is more I, something I feel and if I were the one to be right. an interview, to be interviewed, I guess I could elaborate. I would be maybe a bit able to do it. <laughs> mm. But I'm, I'm happy to be with three of you here, for sure. <laughs> well, actually, uh, uh, you somehow picked uh, the two other Gestalt therapists beside myself who I do feel closest to in spirit uh, in different ways. Uh, so, and uh, uh, maybe you know that the three of us actually did teach together um, recently in Malta. Oh. And, so, and the same, the same combination, I think, uh, hmm. is going to appear in, uh, in Moscow in about a year or so. Uh, hmm. So your uh, intuition was not uh, far off. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in terms of presenting ourselves, what, what are you interested yeah. in mainly? Our, our background, yeah. our development, right. our, our writing, what sort of mm -hmm. teaching? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, so uh, maybe if uh, since you already started, if you could say, um, well, uh, yeah, br briefly, uh, why you feel so close to those two men in different ways. In what different ways and uh, close, what does what it means? Sure. Well, I can say something about that. If, if I am to begin, and that is that uh, Jean-Marie and I uh, 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 were almost like brothers of a sort. We go back to uh, about 1992, and I think we met before that, Jean-Marie, but... Uh, by mail, uh, by, uh, by mail, or I, I think we met in, in the 80s, yes. Yeah, I think we we met. I, I remember having a, a lunch with you or coffee in a restaurant in New York at a at a Gestalt Journal conference. That was the first time that we'd met in person. We'd had email or some kind of of exchanges, uh, and that would have been the '80s. But in 1992, I came to teach for the first time in Europe, in Italy, and then in Bordeaux, and then in Yen. And that was, uh, and I came with my first wife, and uh, I think with my, yes, with my kids too. Yes. And, <clears throat> and so we, uh, so we had a prolonged period together, and since then we've just been in, in touch a, a great deal, back and forth between New York and, uh, and France, um, and uh, we, <clears throat> we have an, an interesting history in that every time I met Jean-Marie, it might be six months, it might be a year apart, it might be more, but every time we've met and we talked about what projects that we were embarked on, it almost inev inevitably turned out to be almost the same project. <laughs> and. You know, when I started thinking about aesthetics, uh, the aesthetic basis of Gestalt therapy, uh, and uh, we met and sat down to talk, Jean-Marie was thinking about the aesthetic basis of Gestalt therapy. And it's been almost like that, many times anyway, ever since. <laughs> Without communicating about it, we found ourselves uh, embarked on a very similar project. So. That's what I meant about the brotherly association. Uh, Dan and I uh, have gotten to know each other in, per in person uh, pretty much recently. That is to say, mostly since I moved from uh, Boston to New York. That was in 2002, I came to New York. And uh, so Dan and I have uh, had a lot of association since then. Uh, and where our similarity is, is, is that we're both very interested in the philosophical basis. This is true with Jean-Marie also, by the way. But Dan and I talk a lot about the phenomenological basis and the philosophical basis of Gestalt therapy. Mm -hmm. And so that's a place where we've had a particular meeting of the minds. We're, we're both connected with the New York Institute for Gestalt Therapy. Dan's a past president. I'm the current vice president, which uh, doesn't make me anything like Mike Pence, but <laughs> <laughs> other than other than being vice president, it is a wonderful role for lazy people. And when it comes to administrative and uh, and collective uh, sorts of things, I am a lazy person. So. Uh, Vice President is a good role for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. I, I love that. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. like I, I can I can recognize uh, what you in what you say, Michael. That uh, the, the uh, our first meeting, uh, my first meeting with you was through reading. Uh, your first uh, article about uh, art and symptom uh, yeah. in the early early 80s uh, 
And uh, at that time, I was uh, uh, writing my first uh, chapter about uh, aesthetics. So I, I had this, this uh, first feeling of uh, brotherness. And <coughs> I remember that uh, one of the second, second or third uh, article was uh, uh, about, um, about astonishment in psychotherapy. And at that time, you were working about curiosity. So yeah. it, again, it was uh, uh, focusing in the same direction. And uh, I think also that I heard about you from Isadore uh, in the early 80s. And uh, because uh, uh, Isadore was appreciating you a lot and uh, in, uh, in, his, uh, in our conversations, he was all often mentioning your name. And we, we met several times also in my home with your family and me going to Boston also. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and uh, the one great project, first great project we had together is when I had the idea of GTI in. And yes, right. I offered you to, to be associated to, to lead this, uh, this project with me. And uh, it was a great moment in our professional life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was. It's a shame it didn't continue, but yes. money money became a problem, as I recall. Many people are very nostalgic of this uh, stage. Yeah, right yeah. Those were those were really good meetings. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe you don't know what it is, uh, Camila. Yeah, I don't. I, yeah, I just wanted to ask. <coughs> uh, in uh, in uh, I think it was in uh, two thousand. Or two thousand and one, we uh, I I created uh, we created a team of uh, seven trainers. Um, it was uh, so Michael and I and uh, Gary Yontef and uh, Philip Lichtenberg and uh, Peter Philipson and uh, Margarita Spagnolo and Lilian Frazao from Brazil. And uh, we decided to, to co-lead uh, a, a 10 days uh, workshop. Uh, the first one was in France and the second one the next year was in Mexico. And uh, it, was, it was great because we had uh, uh, we had uh, the opportunity to to meet each other, to confront our ideas, and uh, and uh, the third the third year it was supposed to to happen in Greece, but uh, it was the year where we, when uh, we were afraid by uh, the president of United States at that time. I don't remember who it was. Uh, what was. It was, I think it was after, it was after 2001 and, Bush. and George uh, W. Bush when was When Bush president. decided to attack, uh, uh, it was Iran or Iraq, I don't remember. Iraq. Iraq. Uh, Iraq. It, it was Iraq. And yeah, it and was Iraq. The world was terrified, uh, terrified about what could happen. Uh, so yeah, we people were to, afraid to travel, to fly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that so we, we couldn't continue, but we did uh, remember Jean Marie. We we got a small book. You published a small yeah. book of, of yeah. uh, a collection of essays from the first meeting from the one in Montpellier. A very nice little book, actually. Yeah. And it was reprinted as a special issue of the Gestalt Journal. Mm-hmm. Uh, the special issue on. Of the Gestalt Journal from New yeah, York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I understand, but uh, it was the, the, the topics were different, or no? No, it was a new printing of the because <laughs> the, first, the first edition was out uh, quickly out of print. Mm-hmm. Okay, after after those uh, two meetings you had th- those. Two uh, after meetings. the first one. It was actually after the first meeting. Right. Uh, and... After the second one, we made a, a DVD about uh, contact which was the part of a, of a panel we had in, uh, in San Miguel de Allende in Mexico. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 And personally, I, I don't remember exactly when I met Dan for the first time. 
I think it was maybe the the anniversary of the New York Institute, uh, the 50th, uh, 50th anniversary. I, I was, uh, we were uh, three or four uh, European invited to be part of this uh, anniversary of the New York Institute for Gestalt Therapy. And uh, I, I, met, uh, I met there, uh, uh, Dan, I met there uh, Ruela Frank too, and uh, and we become friends, and uh, I felt close also for uh, his uh, understanding of foundational gestalt therapy and and uh, also his uh, philo philosophical and phenomenological background, and we we stayed in touch, and I, I invited uh, Dan to come to France also, and so on translated some of his papers and, and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Now, I, I, very, I appreciate that, the, the, uh, the, uh, that I'm the third to speak because you both refresh my memory about when I first met you because I was trying to, trying to put it all together. Uh, and Michael, I think that uh, your office was on the block I lived Yes, right. And when, I, I, when I moved to New York. Yeah, yeah, and that you're, then you moved to the, no, then your office was on the yeah, block. The first, my work. first office was on West 9th. That's right, uh, that's where I live. So, so I saw you, I passed you on the street, and I said, that's Michael Miller. And then I saw you on 15th Street, where my office was, and I bumped into you again. And then we decided to have lunch, right. and we started the, the sparks click, start, no, no, the sparks struck, and we started to talk more and more and more and more. But of course, I've read the things you wrote. I've heard about you, I've heard about you, a lot of people, and our ideas sort of got clicked together. And since then, we've been friends, and we see that so many of our ide ideas feed one another's, and, some, and our friendships just grew and grew and grew. Now, I don't know when that was. I think whatever the years you picked were probably as accurate as, as I can just sum it up. And yeah, I think I think around oh I don't know two thousand maybe two thousand ten or so yeah 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 and the then, last ten years we have episodically met in various uh, various meetings and and uh, just get-togethers between the two of us to essentially talk philosophy and talk to stop therapy stop therapy and we found out so many of our ideas uh, overlapped. So many of our idea, ideas fed one another. I found it very gratifying. And you're one of the few people in, uh, in, around, it, especially in New York, who actually stimulate me that way. And I, I, you're a great resource to me. Um, and, and it's interesting that um, the idea of the aesthetic uh, uh, is sort of a stream that flows fr from you to me and to Jean Marie. That, that uh, you two were working on the aesthetic, I was working on the aesthetic. Uh, independently. I remember I wrote, I, wrote, I gave a, a speech to Laura Pearl's centennial in Munich, and then I called the aesthetic of commitment. Then afterwards, I found that you wrote a paper on the aesthetic of commitment. I didn't know you then. I said, oh my God, I, 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 I violated some, some professional rules and maybe a copyright. And I, I, with my tail between my legs, I contacted you thinking that you're going to just uh, uh, drop some kind of professional bomb on me. Yeah. <laughs> you couldn't care less. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. No, I, I was I was delighted you were thinking about that actually because <laughs> it's such, such an important theme. Yeah, in, in my book. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that was a uh, uh, you know I was treading on somebody's territory inadvertently, and then of course I gave you reference uh, since then, uh, uh, and and, uh, and 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 we became personal friends, and, and uh, I was very grateful to be honor to be and happy to be part of your, your birthday party. The tea oh, yeah. Yes. The, the endless food. We kept thinking, another course, another course, another <laughs> course. No, no. Yeah, that, that, was a, that was a great evening. That was, that was really evening. great. That was really great. Yeah. Uh, that was a sign when we ever going to go back to a restaurant in New York. Well, well yeah, that's right. Yeah. You know, and Jean-Marie. Okay, go, yeah, finish. And, All right. Now, Jean-Marie, I was also trying to put together when we met 
but my, I, I think it all, it was then when we met in, in the flesh, you know, uh, and, uh, in the actual flesh. Uh, I invited you to, to that meeting because, because I wanted as a president to reach out beyond the, the, uh, uh, the, the brick concrete of, of New York City. And you were part of the Institute because of the Isidore connection. And, and the same thing with you, Michael. And well, because I very much uh, can, was concerned about the traditions of the Institute and traditions of gestalt therapy. And I wanted to keep that flowing, alive. And, I, and he brought you in because I heard so much about you and I read so much of, of your work and it resonated so much with me and I've used it so much. So I brought you in and I'm so happy to meet you. I think we might have been in a process group together and you were as bored in the process group as I was. And I felt such, so, such a, a, a kinship with someone who was impatient with that kind of stuff. And uh, uh, that was very fine with me. And also you, uh, I, one of the, the very first published article of mine, which was uh, on Gestalt Therapy and Language, uh, the very first article, you reached out to me and asked whether you could translate it into French. Uh, you may not know how encouraging that was to me, and the, the, that you found it interesting and important, and important enough to translate it into French, kept the ball rolling in terms of my writing. And, and every time you say that to me, it keeps me alive in terms of writing, and let me, it lets me know that there's that kind of an audience for me. And that encouragement was, was important to me and continues to be important. And, and you know, in terms of both of you, the, the respect of both of you uh, supports me a lot. And I, the, the fact that I can be with you here today is a great, is a great, is really great. Because uh, you, you are two of the people that I uh, look to in terms of companionship in contemporary digital therapy. You know, uh, you know, I, you, uh, as you said, Michael, you, you, there's an, as a kinship and a fellowship here, both in terms of, of how we, yeah, uh, uh, are grounded in gestalt therapy today. What's important to us in the thoughtfulness of gestalt therapy? What's important to us in the clinical practice of gestalt therapy, and how it can be seriously expanded? And also, actually, now in terms of uh, the theme of the aesthetic, it's really uh, different with us and important for us. And I like that. I like that, and that we're doing some work on gestalt therapy as an applied philosophy. How radical! Can that be? I like that. What you mentioned, Dan, about uh, about Jean Marie encouraging your writing, uh, I, I think it should be uh, underlined that Jean Marie has been <clears throat> a tremendously important and supportive force oh, yes. in, in both encouraging uh, me to write, Dan to write, many people to many write, people. many <clears throat> people uh, uh, throughout the world. Yeah. And his publishing venture has produced uh, very many uh, important books. Yes. Uh, and, uh, and so in, in terms of writing, uh, Jean-Marie is <coughs> perhaps the most important single figure in Gestalt therapy. I, I can agree. I can in that agree respect. That. The other thing I wanted to mention that, uh, that I think is important to note about the three of us is that we are we are heirs, that is, inheritors of the legacy of, uh, of Pearls, Hefferline, and Goodman. Uh, that we, I think we, we are among the, the conservators of the tradition that that book began, although we have importantly branched off That's from right. it in innovative and different ways. Yeah. But there's a way in which I think the three of us particularly refer yeah. back to it. Yeah. Even when we go yeah. the furthest away from it, yeah. we, we try to keep that historical moment uh, yeah. and its importance alive. Yeah. And, and I think we're three leading figures in that respect. Yeah. Also, in particular, the influence, uh, as Dan mentioned, of Isidore Fromm, which uh, was important in that respect as well as Isidore's particular uh, way of teaching was very important for me and I think for Jean-Marie and Dan as well. Yeah, that's right, that's right. I like the way you put historical moment. Yeah, 
you know, for Pearl Zeppelin and Goodman. I like to think of it as a text of reference, a mm -hmm. reference point to fly off of, to think off of, to practice off of. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Jean Marie, for example, you know, uh, found this phrase that uh, I I knew it, but I hadn't made much of it. Uh, the id of the situation, and uh, out of that he developed a you know a, a very important uh, whole new yep. emphasis in yes. gestalt therapy where. Uh, where the id of the situation became a, a new understanding yes. of, of the contact, nature of contact and the relational and so forth yep. in a very, very fresh way. Right. You do a word search among Gestalt therapists who write and think now, you'll find how many hits on that phrase, how many people now have used that, integrated that as the, one of the bedrock concepts in Gestalt therapy. Right. It's, so often now that they're probably not even referencing Jean Marie because it's not, it goes without saying. <laughs> it goes without well, saying. It, it that, that's, 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 uh, yeah, I just wanted only to, to prove, uh, to make evidence of it uh, th this morning. I mean, in Poland, the, the, this morning we had um, a Gestalt uh, grouping for, uh, to support therapies uh, under this pandemic. And uh, generally we are now calling it Gestalt Cafe. And even during this meeting uh, that lasted two hours, uh, this concept of each of the situation was uh, was mentioned. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When, yeah. When you know you've become an important influence when your name isn't even mentioned. Yes. <laughs> the concept. Yeah, yeah. Well, when you're forgotten. <laughs> when you're forgotten, right. That's when you know you're a real influence. Yeah. It goes without saying. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait till I'm forgotten. Till, till I'm important enough to be forgotten. <laughs> right. uh, I was also wondering if I could, uh, um, yeah, uh, relate to what you said at the end, then about uh, differences also, because you mentioned <laughs> there are some differences. I don't know whether I got it right in terms. I mean, in with relation to aesthetics now, in with three of you, that some of your, yeah. Is that right? Well, I think Dan and I have talked some about differences. Uh, I'm not sure Jean-Marie and I have really talked about a difference in our approach. Uh, I can say quickly about my, my own approach to the aesthetic, which may sound a bit old-fashioned at this point, and that is that for me, I, I, I drew my, my view <clears throat> of the aesthetic. It first appeared in an article I wrote that uh, Jean-Marie mentioned called uh, Notes Toward Art and Symptoms, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, which was in a book of essays of mine. It's still in print, thank goodness. And, uh, and my, my view of aesthetics essentially came from uh, having discovered that uh, Otto Rank uh, and John Dewey were twin influences coming from different directions. I think Otto Rank may have been introduced by Pearls, although I'm not sure he was really the one who brought Rank in. Uh, and uh, John Dewey definitely had very important influence on Paul Goodman. Mm -hmm. And the, the conjunction of these two thinkers from such different traditions Mm -hmm. Otto Rank, of course, uh, from the original Freudian circle. John Dewey, uh, a leading American pragmatist philosopher, that both of them saw that the nature of the aesthetic, the making of art, uh, the, uh, the, the approach of the artist to giving, to taking uh, aspects of experience that were disparate and sometimes even chaotic, <laughs> and sometimes even destructive, taking aspects of, of one's experience and giving them a, a new form, transforming them into a, a reconfiguration and a new form that was fulfilling, satisfying, even beautiful, was a process for Rank and for Dewey that could be applied to everyday life and therefore to psychotherapy. Mm -hmm. And so it was that 
sense of aesthetic, this transformative and form giving aspect that I took from Ronk and from Dewey and uh, have written uh, several articles uh, branching out from that theme. Thanks. And it's much important in my teaching, of course, mm -hmm. and my practice, for that matter. I think we still have a, a lot of work to to do in, in this direction about aesthetics, because uh, for me, there is a lot of misunderstanding of, the, of this philosophy, in, in even in the frame of gestalt therapy. Uh, because uh, for me, it has nothing to do with beauty uh, in, in therapy. Uh, it, has, it has to do with forms, uh, with creation of forms, as you mentioned. And uh, uh, of course, we know that the, the word aesthetics comes about aesthesis, which is uh, the, the knowledge which comes from, from feeling, from sensing. But uh, I think that aesthetics uh, is mostly is mostly and uh, I consider that it's mostly an act, and uh, I want I want to write now in this direction how aesthetic has to be an act, not only not only an experience, not only some something uh, more or less passive, but something very active to to give form. And our name, Gestalt Therapy, is, uh, is also an aesthetic name because it means that we are not psychotherapists, that means therapists of the psyche, but we are therapists of the Gestalt. Uh, the way people build their Gestalt, it means the way people take, uh, create forms. And the, the, the pathology is is connected with the way we create or create forms and uh, wrong forms or forms which are painful and, and so on. So we have, we still have a lot of work and sometimes I receive questions, could you give us criteria for the aesthetic uh, philosophy uh, in gestalt therapy? The, this idea of criteria, criteria for right. me is stupid. It's 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 uh, the the opposite of the spirit of gestalt therapy. Uh, mm -hmm. No no criteria no criteria. Uh, even in gestalt therapy, the the Feltz and Goodman speak about the 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 no no criteria outside the situation. Mm -hmm. What is the criteria for uh, for uh, to compare uh, to compare Chagall and uh, and uh, Picasso? What is the criteria? Oh, Chagall is uh, is better than Picasso. Oh no, Picasso it's better than Chagall. <laughs> Stupid. We can we can leave that to the art historians. <laughs> that's that's right. Yeah, and I, I couldn't agree more about both the active aspect, the making. I want to jump in to, to throw in the, the third. Um, I'm going to jump into the stupidity, and I, I'm going to I'm going to jump in on, on, uh, as a third leg here because uh, to, to support this stool because I have a lot of agreement with what both of you said, and uh, I'm going to proceed from inside of experience, and inside yes. Aesthetic is action, is activity. What isn't, and it is not something, yet it is not something that we do. Creative adjusting is not an action done that would be an agency, but it is an emerging, and we we'll leave that alone, form, forming. Now, go off in that direction. The aesthetic is not about beauty, absolutely right. It is not art criticism which would be evaluation, that would be, that would be stupid. And I think a therapist who mistake aesthetic for aesthetics have a lot to do here. You know, I think that questions of beauty have to be, have to be clarified what they mean by beauty. I mean, there's a whole philosophy of beauty, which is separate. Unfortunately, the aesthetic was looked at from Baumgarten. Now he began 
setting up the philosophy of beauty, but he began with the notion of sensible knowledge. Sensible knowledge as distinguished from knowledge that was clear, rational knowledge. So if we begin from sensible knowledge and think about sense the aesthetic as sensible knowledge, and knowledge is not a flat fact, but knowledge is always enacted, now we're moving along. And in terms of criteria, it's, if you think about criteria, criteria as a felt sense of the situation and the form of a felt sense of the situation and as the ongoing forming of the felt sense, now we can have a sense of, of the Chagall. We can have a sense of the, of the Rembrandt. And the, a sense of a Rembrandt is different from a sense of a, of a, of a Degas. Now, what, how can we say? We can say the qualities of this and the qualities of that. The qualities of this and the qualities of that. The qualities of the grace, the qualities of the light. We can talk about this. We can talk about how we're experiencing this. What is the, our action, our activity in seeing this, our activity in seeing that. Flip it into, into, into the uh, uh, psychopathology. What is the rhythm of our session? Rhythm, music. What is the, our sense of the heat in a session? That could be an aesthetic. We can go off on and on and on. What is, the, what is the, the heartbeat of the session? It's an aesthetic knowledge. Now, in terms of the formal notion, <clears throat> if there's grace, we know what a graceful interchange in language is. We know about the, the flow and the beat. We know about in, kinds of jerky kinds of back and forth in a relational exchange. Those are part of the aesthetic of contacting. Now, it's that exchange. Now, in terms of Ronk and, and Dewey, uh, yeah, this, this is part of the, uh, part of the formative uh, conceptions in Gestalt therapy. And I'm completely at one with that. I'm completely at one with that. That's one of, the, one of the, the, the ways in which Gestalt therapy organizes. There's no question about that. And I, and I, I like, very, as I said, <clears throat> very much the way you're going with the, with the action. And we have to clarify the sloppiness way, way people misunder, really misunderstand what we're talking about because they have to misunderstand it because we're addressing uh, uh, everyday understandings of these, just as we, uh, we have to clarify what we mean by contacting as, as, and self. We work so hard to do that. And, and by the way, aggression, you know, uh, uh, you know, we work so hard with that. So I'm, I, I, I'm happy to be the third leg of the stool. I hope that this people are able to sit on the stool without falling off. <laughs> So there's a, that's, there's, those are the differences. And I think the differences are, are completely uh, electric because I, as you were each speaking, I got excited. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Uh, well, the, the only term that I associated with it that I have found uh, in, in in contemporary phenomenology is this uh, active passivity. This yeah. is the term that I somehow uh, recognize uh, here. That uh, it is passive synthesis. Passive, uh, maybe. Yeah, maybe, but uh, but uh, yeah, I'm translating directly from Polish. But uh, yeah, something. You need something like like the middle mode. Yes, like, it's a mode. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So I don't know if I uh, got the differences that much, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, but uh, but uh, each of you said something about aesthetic and uh, and uh, yeah I, I um, well I wonder uh, uh, now um, hmm. <laughs> yeah uh, uh, because uh, you you Michael uh, there is one thing also that is in my uh, that uh, remains in my mind is that um, you, you were you all three are like conservator you yes. said of, of PhD and at the same time, you, you were, uh, each of you went uh, and is going and still going far away to explore uh, the surrounding, a larger mm -hmm. surrounding. Mm -hmm. If you mm -hmm. could um, briefly, you know, uh, touch those issues that are uh, typical for each of you. Uh, 
at the same time uh, sticking to you know to the the foundation <laughs> what would that be uh, uh, you you rem rem remind me that uh, paul goodman used to describe himself as a neolithic conservative yeah. <laughs> and uh, the way I understand this, uh, this, <coughs> this word is that we have to be conservative um, about, uh, about what was uh, uh, our ground in the past and in the tradition of what have been uh, built before us. And, uh, but in the same time, we also have to be avant-garde. Mm -hmm. uh, in from from this uh, from this ground from this ground mm -hmm. and uh, and I, I I noticed that for instance in in my own case I noticed that uh, I am uh, I've writing and uh, and teaching gestalt therapy for more than forty years now uh, and it's always the same topic which are. Uh, foundational for me. It's mostly contact. It's uh, field. What does it mean? Field perspective. Uh, what does it mean? Self. That's a, that's a foundational basics uh, of gestalt therapy. Mostly contact. I think con contact is a very core concept for gestalt therapy, and uh, all the concepts of uh, uh, of gestalt therapy. Uh, declensions of, of uh, the concept of contact and we still have a lot of work to do on this in this direction and also I think that to, uh, today there is a, a big fashion about um, about phenomenology uh, and the, the connection of phenomenology and gestalt therapy. I'm not so sure that phenomenology was influential uh, to create gestalt therapy. I think it was uh, so more via uh, via pragmatism that uh, the, the influence came. But for instance, I, I would like to have uh, a deep discussion with the phenomenologist about the status of epoche in uh, in gestalt therapy uh, because uh, putting putting our beliefs and and uh, our uh, a priori etc uh, into brackets uh, how is the contact then how is the contact then uh, would it be would it be something like the neutrality of the psycho so-called neutrality of the psychoanalyst and so on? Just I, I say I say that very shortly, and uh, but I think that we have to discuss a lot uh, about the how how consistent it is to to transfer some concept from directly from from phenomenology to gestalt therapy or from psychoanalysis to gestalt therapy as well. And then, um, we are not a philosophy. We are a practice of psychotherapy. It's different. I would love to have that conversation with you, Jean-Marie. I would yes. love to have that kind. I'm, I'm holding myself back. Okay. I have a response. I have a, I have a response. Uh, okay, so it will be your next paper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I said my last paper. <laughs> it's in Brownell's book. And well, I'm not going to say it, respond. And you're right. And I think phenomenology is misunderstood by a lot of Gestalt therapists. A lot of Gestalt therapists. Indeed, for sure. And you are answering them. You're asking them. And I think it's a very important question because they, they screw up Gestalt therapists when they talk about phenomenology. But you're, and I agree with you about phenomenology not being influencing the beginning of Gestalt therapy. Yeah. No, it, it definitely did not. I mean, there was very <clears throat> one one if one brings a phenomenological attitude toward reading PhD, you find a a, a kind of a diamond in the rough uh, tendency toward a, a phenomenological attitude. But it's not in that book. Not in that book. Not in, it was not in the formation of Gestalt therapy. Uh, the, the, first, the first remark I remember back sometime 
in the 1980s, I think, was when Isidore Fromm gave a talk at a conference and it became one of his few published works called, uh, I think it was called An Elegy for Gestalt. I mean, I, yes. And in that he says, that phenomenology is the philosophical basis of Gestalt therapy. Yeah. Yeah. And he's actually it, adding something ex post facto. It was yeah. not in the formation. It was brought in partly by Isidore mm -hmm. and others. Yeah, uh, Richard. Who, who did not understand Husserl or Heidegger very well, who had not read Merleau-Ponty, who after all didn't, didn't write, I think the phenomenology of perception uh, was around, when was it? Which late one? 50s? Late 40s. Late 40s. Late 40s. And it was, was certainly, it certainly hadn't been read by, as far as we know, by, by no, it's Charles, really not Charles or Goodman. Um, so I, I, think, uh, I, I think it's a fascinating conversation that uh, now that you've brought it up, Jean Marie, and you've responded to it, Dan. I definitely want to get into that conversation yeah. as, as soon as we can manage it. So. Yeah, and there's one sentence in PhD that says, uh, I can't quote it directly, but it says something like, uh, uh, to be looked at further in other disciplines such as phenomenology and so forth. <laughs> the word phenomenology does appear as, some, as an invitation. Yes, I think once or so. And, uh, and in, the, in this, uh, in this piece uh, 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 of the unpublished manuscript, uh, which I, b I believe is now published. <laughs> I'm not sure what its destiny is, but uh, this unpublished manuscript from the 60s of Pearls, he calls himself a phenomenologist and his, he, he is so far from being a phenomenologist in that piece or anywhere else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know where he even picked it up. Um, but I want to come back to your original question also, Camila, uh, about, <coughs> about what we can serve and what we, where we part ways from uh, Pearl Zerverlein Goodman. Uh, and uh, the three principles that Jean-Marie mentioned, I, I think are key. But, uh, but also I think we have to keep in mind that uh, the Pearls, Hefferlein, and Goodman was a book written during the era when psychoanalysis and particularly ego psychology branch of psychoanalysis and object relations and Wilhelm Reich were dominant. And those influences uh, understandably pour into that book in many ways and somewhat muddy the waters. And so partly we're moving away yeah. from that aspect of influence on Pearl Zerferlein and Goodman uh, to make it a more phenomenological uh, understanding yeah. of psychotherapy. Not a philosophy, as Jean Marie says, but a practice and a theory of yeah. practice. Right. Uh, then, you know, the, there's this idea of a field which, as it appears in, in Pearl Zerferlein and Goodman, uh, the uh, organism environment field was uh, an idea about a, uh, a field approach and, and about relating it to contact, but it is it doesn't do because it's essentially still a biological idea and mm -hmm. not really uh, where we would go now in Gestalt therapy, at least my understanding of it. The, that we've widened into a whole question of field mm -hmm. that is, to my mind, uh, and I just want to introduce this topic around differences, uh, the, notion, the notion of field, I think, has brought a lot of confusion and as well as a lot of promise into contemporary Gestalt therapy. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, and uh, that's probably a place where you would find some differences among the three of us and where uh, it's another conversation I would love to have is what do we really mean by this field? Because so many Gestalt therapists mention the field, teach field perspective, write about the field. And I think it's become almost a, a, a term uh, 
that fills in when you don't know what you're thinking about in the mm -hmm. same way that mm -hmm. psycho in psychoanalysis, if you don't know what the next thing is, you say it's the unconscious. Yes. Yes. And now, in the gestalt therapy, if you don't know uh, what's happening or what the next thing is, you call it the field. Yes. So I think we really need to work on sharpening this concept and, and talk about our different perspectives yes. on field perspective. Yes. Uh, that's another important and interesting um, conversation to have and, and work to do. Now here, here's a big difference. First of all, I, I completely agree with, 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 with Michael about field and, and, and I think not about, about organism and environment field. I think we've discussed this. You know, I introduced Lebensfeld you know, to, to, to try to drop out environment because the environment it, is, it stresses the, the, uh, the, the biophysical, you know, even the right. social, but doesn't, doesn't include the notion of, of where human beings are living. Doesn't, doesn't open us up to personhood. You know, where is that? You know, where is that? We're, you know, we're, we're human beings. And so that opens us, uh, Lebensfeld can give us the relationality, give us a sense of history, give us a sense of the future. And one of the differences with, from, uh, from PhD and end, I think it's a, a difference for my colleagues is that I'm looking at, at uh, I'm interested in some of the uh, influences of, uh, now I say the new phenomenology, I'm not saying the, new phenomenology, not, not the Schmitzian phenomenology, but some of the newer phenomenologies that are looking at uh, the pathic uh, atmospheres, uh, which, are, which, which, are, which replace concepts such as field. And for me too, when I have to teach field, I don't know what I'm talking about. And I, so it is a placeholder. And you know, sometimes I throw in field because I don't know what else to say. You know, you know it's very much is that because people expect me to talk about field, and it really is like, um, you know, it has to be another another way of saying this. But this is an area that I think I'm interested in because it goes to the notion of intersubjectivity. I'm also interested in how we can displace the subject, displace the notion of the of the I in self functioning because that's more relevant to our world today and our, the notion of the interpersonal, which isn't addressed in the PhD and isn't addressed in, in our sequence of contacting directly. Uh, I've, I'm influenced by uh, some of the phenomenologists uh, who are of the Levinasian camp. So that, that attracts me. And I'm bringing that a little bit into gestalt therapy uh, in terms of uh, relationality. So these are areas of some difference. Uh, I'm closer to some of the Italian gestalt therapists who are working in that area than my colleagues. And I think some of you, you would have strong disagreements with them. And I think that I am closer, although not walking in their footsteps. So we have differences. And certainly there's differences with PhD in this because you know, they, they don't go there. Um, so when I write about Husserl's phenomenology, it's only as a beginning. Because we have to understand that phenomenology didn't end when Husserl died, and Husserl's phenomenology didn't end with his early phenomenology. You know, we we are inspired, uh, but not we don't take in. You know, uh, and the fact that we talk about phenomenology doesn't mean that we um, have added their their phenomenology to Gestalt therapy, but we are letting the phenomenology implicit in Gestalt therapy resonate with theirs. And I think that's an important thing that others have to understand. You know, uh, you know, same thing with neuroscience. We don't become neuroscientists if we get informed by neuroscience in, in our work. And I think a lot of our colleagues are adding in neuroscience as a, you know, like, a, like getting a, a you know, having a, a, a third arm transplanted onto their bodies. You know, <laughs> what is it doing here? <laughs> you know, why, why is it here? Why don't you just read the book and move on? You know. So, uh, so that's yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Of course, if we didn't have differences, we could not have an interesting conversation. Yeah, In fact, right. we could we couldn't even make contact. Uh, mm -hmm. All we could do is uh, is sing Gregorian chants in octaves and fifths. So, <laughs> happy Pentecost. <laughs> yes. <right. laughs> um. Okay, I, I guess, uh, yeah, I, I mean, uh, this idea of uh, seminars, I mean, around those uh, pillars of <laughs> might be 
really a good idea. I mean, might be also might also serve as a boost to uh, write. But also with seminars, this could be, you know, distributed to a larger pu public, I guess, you know, for instance, with you three speaking on aesthetic or on the field and, uh, you know, this, these are like my, you know, I am thinking out loud now, but uh, seriously, I think this would be uh, important. Uh, uh, yeah, contrary to you, I am of this generation and uh, with my yeah yeah i guess it is needed for us as a kind of um, heritage <laughs> we we will be needing it um mm, i guess okay i i'm i will keep that in mind <laughs> uh, and uh, and okay and thank you for today oh, you're, you're welcome thank you for this opportunity and it's yes, a pleasure uh, to meet my friends yeah, fruitful. I mean, I'm I'm glad we got together and here yeah, yeah, and not sitting up, sitting up, uh, having breakfast, not even aware that we were going to meet. Where are you, Michael? I'm in Dobbs Ferry. I'm uh, I'm outside <laughs> Manhattan. Yeah, you said uh, upstairs. I was hoping maybe you were in your, your New Mexico. No, yeah, no, no you got I, there. No, I, I don't think I'll be flying to New Mexico anytime soon. <laughs> and. Uh, yeah. And Val Valerie is still stuck in Chicago with her steel parents. And oh Valerie. gosh, it's a mess. So it is a mess. They're they're trying to open up, uh, you know, New York a little, starting uh, next week. And oh, uh, I, I don't, I'm, I fear for a second wave of this. Yeah, and I, I open thing. up. I don't know when I'm going to see patients. Open up at my age means what? See patients, <laughs> right? No. Yeah. So, well, seeing patients in person, I don't know when we'll begin. I don't know when I'm going to do that. that. So. No. Yeah. No. Okay, so thanks, yeah. thanks so much. For, yeah. for Thank you for this. Fantastic. Thank you for this. It was Thank a very you. good. Have a good day, my friends. Yes, yeah, you, Michael. Yeah. Hmm? Okay. Yeah. Bye -bye. yeah, we'll be still talking, uh, yeah. Daniela, and yes. a couple of weeks. Love this. Bye. And, and John Marie, goodbye. I hope I, I'm in touch with you soon. Bye, everybody.